Welcome to Factorio Masterclass. My name is Nila. So this is the series of tutorials and guides here on YouTube to cover all the aspects of the game and aims to provide insights for you to become a better engineer. Today we're going to take a look at expansion in in the sense of building outpost efficiently, fast. It's sort of a it's something that that once you reach that stage of the game, then it seems to be taking over a big power portion of your life that you just all right, tap no new iron mains, new copper, new coal, new stone, not new uranium, you never need that. But then how about, how about doing it easier? So uh, I've come up with some blueprints that uh, will make it easy for us to do expansions. The idea for this is actually originating from a Reddit post I saw a maybe a couple of years ago and it's sort of been stuck in my mind on that was pretty cool and then uh, on twitch the other day i decided to i needed a diversion from what i was building then i decided i wanted to build that with the new train limit size and yeah so that's uh that's it so i i've been looking on reddit for the origin and i can't quite find it but i suspect it might be kano 96 who made this so um yeah credit for the original idea to Whoever it was, I think it might be Kano. It wouldn't surprise me. It's been doing a lot of cool things. So what I've the what I've been doing, I think that the best way to do it is that we just do it and then we uh, we take a look at at how the break it down and then take a look at the details afterwards. So this is a very common situation. You have trains going somewhere nearby, and you have your train network, and then you have a nice mining ore patch here that you'd like to tap. So how would you do that normally? You'd start building in, building mines and trains and all that stuff. But look at this. I have this blueprint, and of course this blueprint is available. We're gonna line it down there, and then just basically go one, two, three, it's not enough, it's not done yet, it's done like this. Uh, we have three stations, so I go there, there, and of course I need to remove all of this, so that there's room for it. Yeah, that aligns to this one. They align on top of each other, boom. And what you have now is a full setup of a mining location. You can cut this out if you want. The idea here is that it is it's not going to be effective use of anything at all, like resources, but it's uh, the most important thing is it's going to be super easy to build. I mean, how long time did it take us to build this? 10 seconds, not even. And uh, <laughs> then I'll explain while we are building it, I'll explain exactly how it works. So it consists of a couple of blueprints. Basically, the first blueprint is the most important, obviously, is basically taking four lines of of mining uh, miners and I have a full line remember that you need to actually if in order to make a blueprint like this you have to make it on a, in a test world where you have big mining patches so you can stamp it down and it goes into a 4 to 4 split bouncer this is a side bouncer as well this is both a lane bouncer and a side bouncer and then it goes in here and gets loaded onto trains what we then have is some circuit logic I will come back to that later and basically what the, what you're doing here is you can just stamp it down. The Edis blueprint is, you can see here, it is, has a grid size and it has a snap to grid. You can see this green box. That means as I hold down the mouse while stamping it down, then it tiles exactly onto the next one. And that means it doesn't matter how big you want to build it, how big your mining patch is, it, you are going to build it and yeah, it's going to work. It's going to work uh, super easy. And uh, yeah, as you can see, we have quite a few robots, but still it's going to be quite... Uh, quite a lot of work to get this one done i'll put a few radars in here but i think we're almost uh, at the end of the build phase and things will now come in here so there are a few caveats to this obviously it's not going to be even on these ones so the amount of time it takes for each train to fill up is going to be it's going to vary just a bit and that's just the way it is i don't really have a problem with it what it means is that some trains will come in faster some trains will uh, some will open faster and slower than others. Now let's um, ah uh, <clears throat> the other part, the stacker here. So what I'm uh, basically what I'm doing here is I am we're not sending trains in here yet. So that requires one manual change that you need to do. The one manual change that you need to do is go here and change the name to something else. In my case, I would simply make call it. 
I'd simply rename it to... I don't know more. See, I have a few of those, so I will just rename it like this. And copy it to the other ones. Let's go out on the map view. There we have them. And what happens now, now let's, uh, let's look at the stackers. So I have one, two, three stations. And then I have the stacker down here. There are a number of stacker locations. Basically, there is a stacker for two stacker, a four stacker, a six stacker, an eight stacker, and a 10 stacker. That means for every one station you have, you add two stacks here. And the reason why is because I will allow up to three trains to be allocated to one station. And I'm going to use these enable limits to uh, to guide to guide it. And uh, that's what you can see here is not surprisingly, the middle one has a train coming in faster because, well, it's going to get four full lanes in. This one will also now get one in here. So let's, uh, the only thing we actually need to, to take a look at is actually how the hell do I guide the trains to come into the right locations immediately? I mean, one of the things is this tutorial is going to be so short because it's so damn effective to set up a mining location like this. So what we have here, let's go through all of this mess because it's it seems daunting. But first, I'm going to explain from a high level what is it I want to achieve. I want to say how much this is on the green wire, how much iron ore do I have here? When I have 8,000, 8,000 being as enough to fill up a train, then summon a train. If you have less than 8,000, don't, don't summon a train. But if you have more than 8,000, bring in a train. If you have more than 16,000, bring in two trains. More than 24,000, bring in three trains. More than 32,000, ah, nope. I only want to make the maximum of three trains for each. So I have to say, if this one is like completely full, then it can actually summon six trains. And I don't want six trains because it's going to overfill our our stacker down here if all of them reaches that. And that will happen most of the time because you'd want to make sure that you have an, have an excess of ore available so that they will stack up so that when your demand increases, they will be coming in. Oh, it looks nice, right? Like, they just come in here. Look at all the logic. They split themselves and they go wherever they need. Uh, these, little, these little indicators indicate how many trains are allowed to come in. So right now, this one has zero because it's less than 8,000. As it reaches 8,000, boom, one light turns on. One train is coming in. The way I'm controlling this is through the train limit here. Train limit is set by the value L. And that will then go between 0, 1, 2, and 3. So now let's look at how I do this. We are having two global parameters here, two global variables. That is, how many is the maximum number of trains you want for allocated to each station? You can set it here as a parameter. And how much can you store in each in each train? So if you're playing, I don't know, Bob's Mods, where this is different stack size, or Castorio, then you can, or different train sizes, you can change that here and it'll affect all the other ones. So those are the two variables I'm I'm uh, going as input. So that what happens is I'm going to take the input from here. You can see this is 6.1. And then this one will simply convert anything that gets in to a generic signal O as an OR, because this is primarily for OR. It's actually exclusive for OR. The reason why I'm converting it to a signal is then you don't have to change these values once you stand down for ore, cop for iron, copper, coal, steel, not steel, you don't mind steel, you idiot. Coal, stone, stone, that was the one. All right, so what happens is that's the first one. The next one takes the generic ore signal and divides by how much you can, how much you can have in a train. That means it is in this case, 10,000 divided by 8,000, and then it's truncated to an integer, that means X, the value output, you can see on the right-hand side, is one. All right, so now the one goes into these two signals and basically it checks, is X greater than the maximum amount uh, allowed? So if X is five, then it says five is greater than the three that we've defined as the maximum number of trains. If that's the case, then we'll send the maximum number of trains forward. If X is less than or equal to the max number of trains, zero, one, two, and three, or three, then we'll just pass on the, the value of X here. And the final step here is converting the input value, which is either gonna be an X when it's zero, one, two, three, or it's going to be three trains at, uh, 
like locomotive three signal when it's uh, when x would be higher. So whatever input is going to come in is going to be zero, one, two, three, and that will be converted into an L. The L signal is the input signal here for the train limit, and that will dynamically set the train limit to these ones. And I think that's actually all there is to it. The only thing you do, you find this, you stamp down your blueprint, you determine how many stackers you want, depending on how many trains you have, then you change the name to whatever you want. And of course, it also depends on having trains that go from A to B, what I'm doing here. This is also how I would advise doing like basic train setups. You have all of your locations being named the same, and then you control the inputs through the using the limit. And then you have some locations where you want to gather things, you drop off location from a smelter. They will also be named the same and they will be opening and closing them using train limits as well. And thereby you can have a, as many or patches and as many smelting locations and it will dynamically reassign. That's the beauty of this train limit side thing. And now with this one, we also make sure that we don't assign too many to each one. You could do something more advanced with circuits where you just dynamically assign it based on how many there are and what's the maximum number in this in the stacker here. And you know, there's a lot of different things you can make it more advanced. This one is pretty simple. Yes, it is pretty simple comparatively. And because it's uh, it's relatively simple, it means that I can build it. It means that I can explain it and hopefully you can understand it and you can explain it. If you want to go all out and make something that is way more advanced, knock yourself out, but then it doesn't really fit for me into a masterclass, which should be accessible to more people. There we go. That is the beauty of how to do, do outposting super, super easy. It was basically 10 minutes of setup and then 12 minutes of chatting along. Isn't that typical for me? I, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this, uh, and if you have good ideas or bad ideas for future factorial masterclasses, then by all means, let me know. I'd love to, I'd love to, um, to, to make more of these, but I'm kind of running out of ideas. So it has to be something good that I feel like I can add to the sort of the, the body of knowledge for factorial. And I think I, I do this with this uh, clean little setup. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like it, share it with other people. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, take care and stay effective.